July, 18 female come from a pretty low-income family and throughout high school I've been working part-time to help support the family. It's not the sole income, but it is a substantial part because my mom is an illegal immigrant and only able to get paid under the table and part-time at that. I got into a top college, computer science, and due to my family's financial status, I got a full ride, no tuition, room and board, etc., for financial reasons. This isn't tied to academic performance and is guaranteed for as long as I attend. Hence, it's a crazy opportunity I can go to a top college for free, leading to many more possibilities. Unfortunately, it's across the country from where I live. My mom is begging me not to go, my sister is too young to work for a few years, and my mother doesn't make much, so if I left instead of staying and continuing to support the family, they'd be forced to have an even worse standard of life. I told them I'd continue working until summer's end, but I had to go. Going hurts the short term since my family will have less money, but not going hurts long term. Going gives me the opportunity in a few years to make lots of money, which can be much more helpful than what I can do as a high school graduate working minimum wage. And for selfish reasons, I want to go. I want to learn and live a life vastly different from my mom's life. I want to be great. So I've decided that I need to go, both for altruistic and selfish reasons. I know it'll be hard on my mom and sister, but they'll figure out a way to survive. I'll be working full-time over the summer rather than just part-time, so that should be a little extra to tide them over. In two years, my sister will be able to work too, so I'm sure they'll make it. My mom thinks I'm incredibly selfish to leave her and my twin sister to struggle, and even my sister is telling me their life will be much worse without me here. It does make me feel guilty, but I feel if I give this up now, I'll someday end up in the same position as my mom, only with an opportunity to change everything that I never took. Am I selfish? Am I the idiot? Edit, my mom isn't lazy. She's traumatized from her husband's death, which just happened four years ago. My dad was alive then, and he was working and providing a large portion of income. Not the idiot. As a parent, I'm so disappointed that another parent would even think to take away an opportunity like this. Unfortunately, lots of parents want their kids tied to them always. This is a huge opportunity, and you deserve to have a better future. Please, go make a better life for yourself. You're still a kid. It's not on you to figure out how your family will survive. You have a solid plan to make a buffer for them. Your mom may want to get a full-time job or check out your local library for assistance resources. She is in the wrong for trying to parentify you. I agree, there are a hundred ways your mom can make ends meet. You're just the most convenient. Your mom can work more, find a better paying job, get help from charities. She could even find a partner to share the burden. In my experience, giving in to unreasonable demands creates nothing but pain for everyone involved. I think this is generational poverty. Opie's mom is clouded by survival instincts, not the traditional, my kids should stay with me until they're married expectations. Her dad has passed away too, which means they don't have that expected income. I'm sure the mom assumed he'd be there when Opie left for college. Yeah, it is possible to get good grades and still not have an amazing job. The best thing to do is go for something that has decent security. IT isn't as secure as people think. Big tech has laid off thousands recently. OP, have realistic expectations of what your major will pay. And you are the idiot. You don't seem to be working with your family. Can you find a local organization to help your family? Can you take a gap year and still get the scholarship next year? A gap year? What? OP, point out to your mom that you get a free ride now, and in a few short years, you can support her financially much better with an amazing career. Or you can be incredibly short-sighted, not go, and lose all of that and work in low-paid jobs indefinitely. And while other universities are good, the benefit of a top-table university does impact your future earning potential. Usually, you'll start at a higher salary, and increases will go up from there. You'll be looked at for more prestigious places and jobs. And yes, it's sucky for those who don't get this opportunity, but if anyone should take advantage of the privilege of this, it's you. My family, consisting of myself, 39 male, my wife, 38, and our two children, Alex, male teen, and Marie, female teen, moved last year because of my wife's job. Alex has had a rough time since. He has come out to us and his schoolmates as gay just a little while before he got the news that we were moving, so it was particularly hard for him. He had found a solid support system and felt safe where we lived before. 
that was taken away with this move. The place we live in now, while still in the US, is less accepting. Alex has made a few friends, but despite us being here for a year, he still hasn't really gotten comfortable here. Marie, on the other hand, really loves it and has been excelling at this new school thanks to clicking better with her teachers this year. The move did cause some tension between my wife and me, even before we made a decision. I know there's no easy time to move, but doing so during the transition between middle school and high school, arguably the most awkward time of a person's life, felt like a cruel punishment for our son to endure. My wife said it would make things easier since he would be starting a new school either way. My wife has been very unsympathetic to what our son is going through. A few weeks ago, we found something in his room. While I was fully prepared to, one, make sure he wasn't self-medicating in a way that could lead somewhere dangerous, and two, give him the don't be stupid, don't drive under the influence, and don't stink up your room anymore talk, his mom grounded him for two weeks and took away his phone every afternoon after school. This cut him off from his friends from his old school, further isolating him during an already hard time. This brings us to last week. I finally sat my wife down and told her things weren't working. We tried it for a year, but Alex has consistently expressed unhappiness and discomfort. I told her it was time to start making plans to go back. She said that Marie was doing great here, that I always favoured Alex as the baby of the family, and that we needed to give things more time. She also said both kids would be off to college soon. I replied that I wouldn't let my son live in discomfort for three more years before college. Also, my job and money I'd gotten from my grandparents, a trust fund of sorts, more than covered our living expenses, and there was no real need for her to work. I said it was incredibly selfish to put a passion project ahead of her own child, and that being a parent meant sometimes putting our needs on the back burner while we do what's best for them. She was furious that I called her career a passion project and hasn't spoken to me since. I'm at a loss how to move forward. Am I the idiot? Boy, a trust fund baby calling someone's career a passion project is a major idiot move. The context of your children doesn't apply here. You essentially said your wife doesn't do anything significant, which is hurtful and demotivating. Not to mention it looks like manipulation to get her to be utterly dependent on you. My favourite part was how we got all of that context as if it matters or changes that he called his wife's career, safe to say at least a decade of one, a passion project. He's completely sexist. His daughter's well-being doesn't seem to matter. His wife's career is a passion project and he can control and support them on his inheritance. He's using his son as an excuse to get what he wants. Maybe get him some help rather than blame his wife. Yeah, OP. What if Marie, who is doing better than ever here, takes the same stuff when you move back? Will your solution be to move again? Why do you think moving back will be a magic bullet for your son? Teendom is challenging for everyone. You don't know if his support system would have held in the transition to high school. I suspect that you were happier before the move. You seem to resent your wife's job, and you'll likely resent the time her job takes away from you. You also like the power that comes from controlling all the money. Moving back is what you want for you, and the bonus is that Alex seemed happier there too. You two need counselling both for your marriage and on how to help Alex through adolescence. My, male 29, wife's 28, new hobby is talking about how she has various mental health conditions, including depression, ADHD, OCD, PTSD, and anxiety. I told her if she is concerned about having these conditions, we should seriously go to a mental health professional to get her evaluated. However, she always refuses to go to a doctor because she doesn't need someone else's validation. I told her it's not about validation, it's about finding resources and help to let you live a better life and cope with your struggles. She still refuses. I know many people struggle in long lines and waits to get mental health diagnoses or sometimes aren't taken seriously. That's not the case for us, we have great mental health resources and clinics nearby and enough money to afford an evaluation. Nowadays, my wife uses her self-diagnosed conditions to get out of her responsibilities. She recently stopped doing her share of chores because her ADHD is so distracting and it just stresses her out too much to fight it. For example, we were making cupcakes for her niece's birthday and I frosted them in purple instead of blue while she was in the bathroom. She made me scrape off the frosting and redo it because apparently it was triggering her OCD. And when I tried to tell her it wasn't a big deal, she got upset at me for belittling her mental health. 
Now, I've never accused my wife of lying to take advantage of the situation, because I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she genuinely does have something going on, or maybe she just doesn't understand that mental health disorders aren't trivial personality traits. However, we were at a family reunion at my sister's house, and I was talking with my sister, her husband, and my wife. My sister has struggled with debilitating seasonal affective disorder and seasonal depression since childhood. I asked her how her new light box therapy worked, and she told me she'd seen some improvements. My wife jumped in and said that she has seasonal depression too, and all my sister needs to do is drink more caffeine and power through the day because that's what's worked for her. My sister kind of uncomfortably laughed her off and said thanks for the suggestion, but I could tell she was a little upset because we were having a serious conversation when my wife jumped in to say that. My wife got a little pressed and told my sister not to laugh her off and take her seriously if she wanted to improve her condition as a fellow survivor. This comment made me angry and I told my wife to please stop talking about her undiagnosed mental health issues in public because we don't even have confirmation that she really has seasonal affective disorder. My wife acted shocked that I said this and stopped talking to me for the rest of the evening. When we got home, she blew up at me for trying to damage her reputation in public and making her seem like a liar. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your wife is definitely using those mental health labels to push away responsibilities, which is why it's even more important that she go to see a professional. Making you redo cupcakes because it upset her OCD is a prime example of this. She made you responsible for her condition while she did nothing herself. Same with not doing chores because her ADHD is too bad. She's making everyone around her, mainly you in these examples, take responsibility for managing her symptoms instead of getting help and figuring out ways to address them herself. Very well put. OP is not the idiot and his wife can't have it both ways. Either she gets a diagnosis from a professional and starts taking steps to mitigate what are actual medical issues, or she insists on not seeing a medical mental health professional, she should stop making this supposed mental health struggles the central defining feature of her interaction with the world. Not to mention requesting all kinds of accommodations and unearned validation from others. As the parent of someone who really has been diagnosed with ADHD, severe anxiety and severe depression, which almost cost their lives, I find this behavior reprehensible and vile. I get that these are strong words, and I am very, very happy that we can talk about mental health in the open without the stigmas of even a decade ago. This is your hill to die on. She lacks empathy for those who are truly suffering and is pushing you around with it too. Force her to get an evaluation or run away from this relationship. If I were a shallow person, I would say I hit the jackpot. I 100% hit the jackpot, but not for the reason you might think. I met a young woman, Claire, through my sister last year. They went to college together and they're good friends. I thought that she was incredibly beautiful when I saw her, but I was trying my best not to be the creepy older brother hitting on his little sister's friends. We talked briefly and I asked her about her work since graduating. She gave me a weird look but told me about working in the medical field. I thought it was very interesting from the sounds of it. After they left, my dad made fun of me for not asking her out. My sister called me last January out of the blue and said I was probably good to contact her friend and ask her out. She said she even put in a good word for me and that I was going to need it. So I started talking to Claire and we went out for lunch. She is very beautiful as I said. She's also very smart and driven. She has a future all planned out. I jokingly said I was interested in being part of that future. She said my sister had already half convinced her I was a good idea. We had a few more dates and then we made it official. It's been over a year since our first date and my family loves her and my friends all think I fluked into the greatest relationship ever. Anyways, the party. Whenever I talk about Claire, I mention her work. She studied child psychology and is working on her masters. See? Smart. I love bragging all about how she's making the world a better place. At the party, my friend started joking around about her being able to make more money as a model or something. I told my friend he was being an idiot talking about her looks and that he should drop it. He didn't. He even started making Beauty and the Beast comments. He was rude but never vulgar, just rude. He wouldn't drop it. He may have been a little jealous and had been drinking. She finally went on her phone and showed him some pictures of herself in the uniform from the job she does for fun. She's a cheerleader for a sports team. 
She then told him how little the job pays. She spent time explaining to him that she competed in cheer in college and it was a hard sport and that she only auditioned for the professional squad because they do a lot of work with children's charities. Finally, she said she was tired of people like him thinking all she had to offer was her looks. He got embarrassed and left. He called me up later and said I was an idiot for not telling him I'm dating a cheerleader. I said I wasn't. I'm dating Claire, a woman who is on her way to being a child psychologist. He said that I should have told him so he wouldn't have been such an idiot about her looks. It's not my place to tell people. She doesn't tell everyone. So he's angry at me for not telling him. He's upset with her for telling him so publicly. I think he was behaving like an idiot and should have dropped it when I said so. Not the idiot, he is being very superficial. She mentioned how little she was paid for cheerleading, which I didn't know, and that she only did it because of the charities the team was involved with. This woman has hidden depths. Respect is due. Friend insulted both you and your girlfriend. I wouldn't worry about his hurt feelings and rather focus on finding new friends and ensuring you and your girlfriend aren't dealing with this nonsense in the future. And just so we're clear, your so-called friend sounds almost like they're trying to sow discord between you two in some really transparent and desperate ways in an effort to win over the heart of your girlfriend. I'm not sure what sort of bizarro world he thinks he's living in, but if he's demanding an apology from you, it's probably time to go low contact because you're definitely better without him. Oh, and congrats on winning the lottery. I, 46 male, have a son, nearly adult, with my ex. I'm since married and have been for 12 years to my wife, 45. The doctors recently found cancer in my wife, but quick enough to do chemo to shrink it, then remove it. It's not threatening if we can do this process. We needed money and I gave my son my old car. It's in my name. I told him this was an emergency and I had to sell it. He wasn't the only one who had to make a sacrifice. My wife and I had to sell much of her jewellery and our laptop. He was really upset by this and complained to his mom who said it wasn't fair that we took his car. It was his former transportation. I told her I would give him rides to work if needed and there is a school bus who could pick him up. This really angered them and my son now doesn't want to come by this weekend. I feel bad that he's suffering but this was an emergency. You are the idiot. You don't take back gifts. There are other and better ways to get money for treatment. From now on, your son knows that anything you say is his can be stolen back. Not only did you take away a gift, you took away some of his freedom and trust. One of my friends has cancer and his health insurance paid a great deal for it. Where is your and your wife's health insurance? Why didn't you all consider taking out a loan or work out a payment plan with the hospital? You're welcome to sell off your possessions. You can't require others to make the same sacrifice. He is not obligated to help pay for your wife's treatment. The son shouldn't have to sacrifice because she isn't even his family. Um, what? She's his stepmom and has been in his life for 12 years. And since when is the convenience of a teenager having a car more important than a human life? This is one of those rare occasions where I think OP is wholly justified in saying, I sold the car I gave you to save your stepmom's life. To all suggesting debt, selling a car to avoid going into debt is way smarter and cheaper than going into debt. OP, you are not the idiot. It's just a vehicle of yours that he would borrow. Cancer sucks and everyone in the family has to make sacrifices because people are more important than things.